Good morning. I want to welcome you to Easter Sunday services on the April 12th, uh, 2020. Uh, what a unique um, opportunity and time that we have to come and celebrate uh, this together. Just want to make a, a way of a, just a few announcements. Again, Janley Baptist Church, we, we, our mission is to transform our community by leading people to know and imitate Jesus. Uh, we want that to be who we're about. Uh, just a couple of things here. Annie Armstrong, we, we want to go beyond our community to our country. And uh, this offering, we see we've grown. I know there's a little more even added to that. Uh, so I would encourage you, if you've not given to that, that money goes, 100% of it goes to support mission efforts in the United States and in Canada. So again, encourage you to give. I want to encourage you to our Wednesday night evening Bible study and prayer time at 6 p.m. Again, a unique way. We're in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 13. We'll be talking about marriage, uh, maybe for a couple of weeks, if, if not longer. Uh, again, encourage you to tune in and to, to be a part of that. The last thing I want to encourage you to do is this, is just to remember Grace Ministries. And, uh, and also, it's not on here, but there's some blessing boxes around town. Uh, that if you can fill those, uh, just the need is there. Um, uh, we've seen, I don't, we'll, we'll meet tomorrow, uh, the board of directors for Grace Ministries to find out the exact needs, but uh, um, we know that food banks around the country are being swarmed uh, with needs that are there. The last thing I, I want to say as we begin this time, if you'll just, again, tune in, uh, those of you who picked up um, the, the, the wafer, the, the bread and the juice, um, Again, I, I opened one just to see, and there's a top layer that peels off, and then there's that opens the bread, and then a second layer that opens the juice. About midway through the service, uh, right after seeing Wonderful Merciful Savior in, in a video with myself and my wife on there, that'll be the time that we'll come, and we'll take that together. I'll lead you uh, through that uh, as, we, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. I'm glad you're here. Let me tell you just a couple things. Uh, Marvin. Uh, Brother Marvin has a, has a children's sermon. After that, there'll be a short uh, video, a music video that we'll play to allow some transition of some things. Uh, I think you'll be blessed by it, and then we'll go right into worship together. So let me pray as join me in prayer, please. Father, we come today. We, um, Father, just this, again, this most important day in history that you sent your son into the world. There was just this time uh, 2,000 years ago where, where he was born um, through the Holy Spirit to a woman. And, Father, that he lived, Jesus Christ lived this perfect life. Father, that perfect lamb that, that um, was to be slain. And, Father, he, he did. He died for our sin on that Friday, but he didn't remain dead. The tomb was empty. The, the, the witnesses saw him alive. They testified to it. Father, the tomb was empty. Father, we come to every Sunday to celebrate that, but particularly this day, we celebrate the empty tomb. Father, I pray and acknowledge right now that you are here with me and you're here with this worship team in this place. But Father, you are simultaneously in who you are being all present with every person that's listening on the other end, Father, in their homes or wherever they're at, you're listening right now as a part of this. Father, let your presence be known through the Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be with y'all this morning. I'm going to ask boys and girls now that you go find your Bible. I'll give you a couple seconds. Go get your Bible. When you find your Bible, say amen. Boys and girls, I'm going to ask that you turn to the New Testament Matthew 
chapters 26, 27, or chapter 28. When you find your Bible, say amen. If you hadn't found your Bible yet, please say, oh me. If you f now, whenever you find the scripture, say amen. If you hadn't found it yet, say oh me. Oh me. This morning, I would just want to read the, the scripture in the shortened version. Jesus took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew that he was about to die. The disciples fell asleep, but Jesus prayed, Father, please let this pass from me. Not my will, but your will be done. He woke the disciples and said, get up. My betrayer is coming. Suddenly, Judas arrived. A large crowd carrying swords and clubs was with him. Judas kissed Jesus so the crowd would know who Jesus was. The men grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Jesus was taken to the high priest, Caiaphas, who accused Jesus or of claiming to be God, a crime deserving death. The leaders mocked Jesus and witnesses told lies about him. The crowd beat him. Peter, one of, his, one of Jesus' disciples, waited outside. You were with Jesus, some people said. Three times Peter said that he did not know Jesus. The leader sent Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Pilate could not find that Jesus had done anything wrong, so Pilate offered the people a choice. Set Jesus free or free Barabbas, a well-known criminal. The people cried to free Barabbas. When Pilate asked the crowd what to do with Jesus, they shouted, crucify him. Pilate agreed to put Jesus to death. Soldiers beat Jesus, put a robe on him, and placed the crown of sharp thorns on his head. They nailed Jesus to a cross. From noon until three in the afternoon, doctors covered the land. Jesus cried out to God before he died. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. One of the men near the cross said, this man really was God's son. Jesus was buried in the rich man's tomb. A stone was stilled in front of the tomb, and men stood guard so that no one could steal Jesus' body. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb. Suddenly, a strong earthquake shook. An angel came down from heaven and rolled back the stone from the tomb. The angel said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen just as he promised. As the women ran to tell the disciples the good news, they heard a man say, good morning. It was Jesus. The women knelt and worshipped him. Jesus told them, don't be afraid. Go and tell the disciples to go to Galilee, and they will see me there. Sometimes bad things happen to everyone. But sometimes they end up being good things. Sometimes when we don't expect it, something good will come from something bad. Today we heard the story of when Jesus died, which was a bad thing, but something good came from the bad thing. He rose from the grave and he is alive again. God sent Jesus to be our Savior, which is the best thing. Jesus died on the cross for all of people's sins. He is alive. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and your family.
was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. When the time came to completion, God sent his Son, born, a born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not receive him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave the right to be the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of a natural descent, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 1 through 4. Galatians 4, 4 through 5, and John 1, 10 through 4. preaching and saying, After me one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came about in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels were ministering to him. For we do not have a high present priest who cannot sympathize 
with our weaknesses, but but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness and and seeing the multitudes he felt compassion on them because they were distressed and downcast like a sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is abundant but the workers are few therefore pray to the lord of the harvest to send workers into his harvest summoning the 12 disciples he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thom Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon of Zelot, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and Jesus sent out the twelve. Matthew nine thirty five, ten five. Ten. Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives he sent two of his disciples and said to them go into the village opposite you and immediately as you enter it you will find a colt tied there 
on which no one yet has ever set. Untie it and bring it here. And they brought the colt to Jesus and put their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields, and those who went before and those who followed after were crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he himself will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Prepare for us there. And the disciples went out and came to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. Okay, we know that they came to that upper room. It says Jesus, one of the early texts of this is out of 1 Corinthians 11. Just 20 years after those events that, G, that Paul reported this and talked about, and he said this. He said, the Lord Jesus, on the night which he was betrayed, took bread, and we had given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It says that he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and, and the elders. Now he who was betraying him had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I shall kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And after coming, he immediately went to him, saying, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. 
Then all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes gathered together. <laughs> Early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council immediately held a consultation. In binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him up to Pilate. And wishing to satisfy the multitude, Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. And they crucified him and divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And when the sixth hour had come, Darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Joseph of Arimathea came a prominent member of the council, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he gathered up his courage and went before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Joseph bought a linen cloth, took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb.
after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. They ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. chapter 1 verses 3 through 11 after his suffering he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God on one occasion while he was eating with them he gave them this command do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised which you've heard me speak about for John baptized with water but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit so when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up in the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven.
including me in your April 2020 Easter worship service. The scriptures I will read come from Revelation 19, 11 through 16, and 21, 1 through 4. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages war, and his eyes are a flame of fire, and upon his head are many diadems. And he has a name written upon him, which no one knows except himself. And he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. And from his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may smite the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among them, and they shall be his people and God himself shall be among them, and he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, there shall no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away.
Paul wrote about Abraham, he said this, He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it is credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For we, for, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to, our, to, to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. I simply ask the question today, why was all this necessary? Well, just simply put, God created a perfect world and at the peak of his creation, put man, created in his image, in it. And he gave them one simple rule, don't do this. You're free to do anything, but don't do this. And man couldn't do it. They broke it. God built it. Man broke it. And the only one that could fix it was God. That's why Jesus came. Born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, doing good. He died on the cross for our sin. He died on the cross for our sin, but was raised for the dead, from the dead on the third day. We come and we look forward to the day that he's going to consummate that creation. We look for that, and we hope for that. Our invitation to you is this, is to believe the good news. Just as Abraham believed and was credited for, to make him right with God, we ask you to believe too. We ask you to contact us. If you're out there and you don't know the way to God, please let us know. Call us. We'll, we'll visit with you. We'll talk to you. We issue that invitation to you to believe the good news. Now let me close with this. Paul wrote, he said, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments in his past beyond tracing out, racing about. Who has known the mind of the Lord, or has seen, who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. God bless your day.